Hello and welcome back to another Let's Play. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing our adventures of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. This is going to be the Against the Hive campaign, the much anticipated succession of the Royal Rumble campaign with even deadlier and a little bit different foes uh, this time. The whole theme of the campaign, as I wanted to lay it out, is to fight against a tyrannid like swarm and we're going to see that in the mod selection as well as hopefully the gameplay that most of it is going to be normal soldiers with quote-unquote everyday weapons against an overbearing amount of aliens and specifically against chrysalid and chrysalid like aliens so the background story of this is uh, that uh, advent has indeed conquered uh, the earth but unfortunately, a more meaner, badder, and stronger form of chrysalids has evolved under the guise of Advent, and the rulers, the ethereals, are having a hard time keeping them at bay. So they break loose, and as part of that, we are now in not only fighting against uh, Advent, but on top of that, an uncontrolled swarm of aliens. What I'm expecting that this game is going to be is very hard, tactically taxing, but amongst all, it will be quite brutal, as some of the restrictions that I put on this campaign will lead to a lot of character death. I've learned out of uh, the Royal Rumble quote-unquote mistakes, and uh, will present a hopefully even more engaging and fun and slaughtery version of XCOM. So today we're going to review what mods we're going to use. We're going to see how the game is being set up and we, we are going to take a look at the entire list of against the hive. So a lot to go through as we're, as we're quickly rushing through all of that. I've put a complete list of all of the mods that I'm using in the doo below so that you will have a time to just subscribe to everything and play along as uh, your heart's uh, desire. The Against the Hive uh, mod list is a bit different uh, to the Royal Rumble one and I wanted to go through the main differences. So first and foremost, let's start with what the aliens are getting. The aliens are mainly getting the Hive. The Hive is going to be the segregated uh, Tyranid Swarm that is going to be an own faction within this game. Uh, it comes with all of the beautiful uh, Xenos uh, powerhouses that you are uh, used from the Royal Rumble. Lots and lots of new aliens. You can see a Hive Queen, Ripplers, Warriors, Drones, Chameleons, Infectors, etc. etc. But that is not all. We are putting even more Hive in there, which in itself will create Hive ambushes, swarm retaliations, Hive terror missions, and a couple of other extra missions that uh, should make for a diverse set of Hive-related activities. So really our goal uh, within uh, this campaign is mainly to fight against the Hive, if we are successful and kill the Hive Queen, that already constitutes kind of as the minor success of this mission. And uh, maybe we can go all the way and actually get the rulers up out of the way. But when you hear about the limitations, you will see that this is a quite steep ladder to climb. So what else do the aliens actually get? We are playing with a better advent, which will make the AI better, as well as introduce the typical modifications of ABA, which I found to be a good baseline to just upgrade all of the normal aliens, as well in, as including primes, which just make everything a little bit tougher. On top of that, we are bringing back the War of the Chosen Rulers regeneration, uh, yes, you heard that correct. Uh, the moment that a ruler flees, they will come back with all of their hit points, all of their armor, just to go the entire distance. Besides the small bugs that we had recently with that, I actually think the idea is great, so we're continuing with it. And 
to round everything up, I figured there might be still place for one additional faction. The majority of you wanted to, to see the Dark Elders return and really how it fits into that whole storyline is the Dark Elders might be a different alien species that are deeply, deeply afraid about a Turinid uh, invasion and therefore they are investigating the Hive as well. They have only very limited resources that they send here so therefore you will see a couple of uh, high profile compact powerful squads from them but not a full-fledged like orbital invasion how you would normally see it that however uh, will make our early game substantially more difficult so we're going to fight against uh, dark elder sometimes with the limitation of only that one extra faction we will not see the problems of royal rumble where there is just too much going on they will be uh, in a mission every blue moon but that's about it other than that we're fighting really mainly against the hive and advent which neatly brings us along to a couple of the modifications that will make this game um, quite ter uh, terrifying, I might say. Number one is a harsher version of increased pot size by force level. As uh, the game will progress, you will see that bigger and bigger pots are going to spawn. And I configured it in a way that the actual pot size at the end might be as large as triple the size of uh, the normal uh, pot sizes, which means we're going to see that uh, massive uh, Turinid overrun effect where we're going to fight against hordes and hordes of them. And if you hear about the limitations, that will sound even more threatening as there will be maybe more hit points that we can shoot through. To make the other factions like the Lost meaningful, we're going to go in with no Lost headshots. I got rid of the World War Z uh, mod. This alone will make the Lost uh, just a bit more tanky and force to be reckoned with, so we're continuing with that. We are continuing to ban a better repeater as um, or the original repeater and replace it with a better repeater as we don't want one shots uh, to happen. On top of that, the normal classes are all disabled. So we're not going to play with them. The only thing, and we're going to come to that in a second, is an alternative version, a more militaristic, more realistic version of classes. So better repeaters are off. Other than that, the rest of the equipment is good to go. I do not believe that we will have enough resources later in the game to really go that deep into any of the quote unquote OP items. I don't think that we will have more than maybe one or two mimic beacons before the campaign is going to inevitably collapse under the Tyranid's uh, force, but we'll see. Uh, it will be fun to see how far uh, or how long I can last in that environment. Which neatly brings us to the next point on my agenda, which is what does XCOM actually get in the equation? One of the biggest changes in this particular campaign will be the selection of a new uh, class system. We're going to get rid of all of the standard classes. I will see how we're going to deal with the hero classes. Maybe one of each is still fine. Uh, that is sort of okay, but I really want to focus uh, the playthrough around the core classes. And there are quite a few uh, class mods out there that just ramp up uh, the power curve of the classes. I selected one that actually makes it worse. It's similar to the long war classes, but a bit different. These, uh, the proficiency class pack uh, will introduce a few more military, uh, military esque classes. We got the assault, which is the classical infantry, uh, which mainly will go through um, a lot of either shotgun related activities or sword related activities. So imagine the assault, but really a bit more um, focused on uh, melee and close combat. We got the marine, which in itself is kind of the equivalent of a uh, fire um, support or fire based class where we're just going to bring the typical light them up uh, twi uh, shoot twice um, 
type of uh, character back in the, uh, into the mix. We got the Sapper, which is a full-fledged class that focuses on explosives. We got the Field Medic, which is a specific class in and around just healing and buffing and supporting. And uh, we got the Tech Specialist, uh, which is a class uh, that focuses around hacking and disruption, as well as a couple of other uh, topics. And finally, the Sniper, which is a modified version of uh, the normal uh, Sniper, um, minus the pistols as far as I do understand. So you really have uh, more of a military uh, feel. There is a full description about uh, the classes that are included. We're going to play those. We are, on top of that, adding a couple of secondary weapons uh, that Long War is using. Knives, sort of shotguns, uh, targeting, um, targeting devices for better hits, as, as well as a couple of other stun um, off hands. Those should allow for a wider, a wider variety of options for our uh, squad. And one further limitation that we're going to play with, this is very important, is we're not going to upgrade any uh, weapon or armor. So you're going to see ballistic weapons and the standard armor throughout the entirety of the game. So keep that in mind. Double to triple enemy squad size, massive increase of alien power, and we are basically just having normal everyday weapons against these really, really cruel creatures. In order to offset for a bit of that, I decided to bring in a mod that is called Vest Slot, additional Vest Slot, and it does exactly what it's supposed to. I like the idea of it because it allows with standard armor to have that very small upgrade where you can have an extra vest, uh, which normally wouldn't make the cut if you only have one slot, um, but it's not really intrusive or negative. It adds uh, to the flavor of it and we can have a couple of vests plus the other utility, the one other utility slot that we do have will be highly contested with whatever else we're building. So normal marines, normal uh, mm, ballistic weapons and normal equipment. The last small addition is an, uh, an add-on which is called Overflow Ability Points, essentially when you uh, field uh, maximum uh, if, uh, level units, you will get a couple of extra ability points because they would theoretically get them, but since you're already maximum level, um, that goes into the overflow and is erased in normal XCOM. I figured that is fine because one of the progression systems that we're going to find is really the soldiers in, in this particular instance. And I want to see how the new classes are performing. Let's go through the rest, uh, which are mainly cosmetical modifications. I'm just going to hit a couple of highlights. The cosmetical, the, the biggest cosmetical changes here are a lot of new maps. I've used uh, this here as an example. I've only selected high quality maps so that we are going to see a couple of new interesting environments where we're going to fight in. We're going to see a few uh, mods that are just uh, improvement of quality of life, such as uh, the uh, cost-based abilities, uh, such as uh, the screen for the quick soldiers and the increased or better unit flex. Uh, you've already seen all of that. So we're bringing this back as well as the colored armor bars. And really everything else is just fixing of um, errors or bugs or mistakes that the game has to offer. Uh, the core of this very playthrough will be that we're fighting against chrysalids and that we will need to be able to stop them with whatever basic means we have. So legendary Iron Man, double enemy squad size, hive, better AI, massive, massive uh, in increase of difficulty. And we are going in with nothing but ballistic weapons, standard armor. Yep. One extra vest. And we have banned out a couple of the stronger items. Plus, we completely got rid of the rather strong base classes of XCOM 2 and replaced them by weaker classes. So, what could possibly go wrong in such a scenario, you might ask? Well, good question. Uh, hypothetical straw man. Let's jump into the game and see what is going to happen. 
Good, so here we are already foreshadowing how this campaign is going to look like. We are going to play on, no, not rookie, but legendary. Uh, legendary. We're going to start with the tempers on this one. We had uh, the skirmishers the last time. Feels like we need to go back to Cobfort. Uh, we also want permanent dark events, of course. And I think the rest is fine. People ask me what kind of soundtrack we're using, the UFO defense one, because it's the best. And we're of course going to enable Iron Man. Let's jump right into the mix. Accessing the feed now. This is the designated position. All right, we landed. Uh, let's uh, take a good look who has made it into our draft. So number one, Taurus. Uh, loud and proud with his uh, nice little helmet there. We got Lyrical, we already had her in the last run, and we got Wrong Planet, who I think is a new subscriber. I haven't seen him in the character pool so far. And finally, Hogbite. I don't want to make that run too much about Hogbite, and more about the normal soldiers, so we're going to see how much we need him. But a Templar here or there has never hurt the progress of a campaign. Quite the opposite. Good. The first thing in Gatecrasher is always we want to go for the high ground. Not a big surprise. You guys already know that I'm a sucker for high ground, so wrong planet is uh, moving up, and so is everyone, uh, everyone except Hogbite. But he uses concealment just to take a look at what we're dealing with. We're having a nice little fire line back there. Heard a different door opening somewhere, so that might have been here or in that building. This will be very interesting as we cannot reach them yet. If we use Hogbite, he could hit all three of them. They will uh, likely uh, scatter forward and we could use an Overwatch trap. There is a small chance that one of them just moves back here. Could be countered by just exploding it, but then we can't hit all three of them. So, you really got to think about how you want to do your engagement. This does not yet seem like the right engagement. Here, they are a bit closer. Both closer together, but, oh yeah, well, never mind. We found the next pack. Advent Demolitionist. Okay, that's, uh, I think, one with a rocket launcher. Yeah, we gotta be a bit careful here. I, like I said, I don't want to pull two packs at the same time. Covering now. 
Let's wait until one of uh, these patrols has actually moved up uh, into a reasonable position. This here is not bad at all. We just got to get a bit closer. Oh, now they are moving away. Let's force them to come back because the enemy will always place one unit between us and the actual objective. So by moving forward, these guys will uh, move around. Yep. Once you know how to manipulate the AI, it will start doing exactly what you want it to do. Well, most of the time. Not always, but most of the time. Now the AI cleverly thinks it has us trapped. But the real question is... Are we trapped with them, or are they trapped with us? Think about it. Good, we're doing the classical overwatch grenade uh, throw. Can only hit two, can we? Oh, come on. You hate these pixel Perfect. Yep. Yep. Yes, we can hit three. Okay. You just need to like squeeze it in, I suppose. Here, catch. There we go. Oh, wonderful. Loot destroyed. But that was a double kill on a grenade. Very low chance that that actually would happen. Nice little overwatch kill. And enemies should have heard about that. Now, what we're going to do in return is we're going to move up slightly to the back. And let's wait if one of the packs actually moves into our overwatch trap. Good. That could be the sector pack investigating what they've just heard. Scanning. Moving ahead. Yeah, they're pretty much down here. I can see it from the sound Come indicators. I will sense any yeah, disturbance. Now they are moving slightly back. Okay, we gotta get a bit closer. So really what we're doing is moving up the fire line. Single blue moves is what you want to do. No problem, Don't boss. over push it. Move everyone first and then execute overwatches and other stuff. Seems doable. Wrong planet without the grenade is in the back of uh, this entire fire line. Because we want the guys with the grenade in the front line, of course. Slight move from Hogbite, nothing major. And we're pushing the fire line towards the north from our current camera position. Lots of movement, but nothing really outstanding. Again, blue moves on all fronts.
Let's give it two or th three more rounds in the hopes of uh, the enemies coming in a bit closer. Civilian yelling back here, which means something must have happened, maybe an alien. Typically they are not just yelling, maybe they have seen the corpses and that's why they yelled. Okay, well, be it as it may, we finally got our overwatch trap. And in classical XCOM fashion, we missed most of the shots. All right, well, guess who has a melee weakness? Damn right, it's the sector. The strength of the Templars ebbs and flows with the tide of combat. As we focus our energy, our power increases and can be unleashed. Well, I can show you something that will be unleashed. Take this. Yep, the demo guy got killed by a grenade. Cool. Slowly but surely moving up without trying to trigger anything. Overwatching, and not very surprisingly, another pack comes in. We're not sure whether to chalk it up to training or mind control. Nice, good hit. Like it. Move to half cover. Oh, that's not good. Full cover. The recoil moves up. We gotta remove the full cover. Very well. going here this looks like a dangerous spot but it isn't you would need to go all the way around here to flank it and it is full cover even from here using weapon proximity to our advantage and then finally moving in got a big fat solid kill right there And besides, besides losing our loot, which we could have used, everything else uh, went according to plan. That's potentially the one and only flawless mission that we're going to get in that entire run. Mark my words. All right, so let's take a look what kind of promotions we are getting. Wrong Planet is a... What is it? Marksman. New ability. So, precision targeting. The Marksman is proficient uh, with uh, shot precision and long-range accuracy. Well, okay, what does that do? Gain the Brace ability. Aim penalties uh, are reduced, and dodge is increased, and 10%, okay. So this seems to be kind of a passive ability.
Very good. Uh, then we got holo targeting. Single turn. Effect lasts two rounds. Holo targeting is turn ending unless marksman also has rapid targeting. Does not stack. And up to 20% uh, hit, which isn't too bad. It's okay. And Phantom. Yeah, it's the standard Phantom. So, interesting. Now that is, I actually wouldn't have uh, given this ability to a sniper because now we can no, no longer sniper overwatch and use, for instance, kill zone. He will remain hidden until we actually break concealment with him. Good. Lyrical is an assault infantry. We got CQB dominance. Uh, gets bonuses in close quarter battle that improve over time. Okay, so bonus to defense, critical hit, uh, defense and critical hit chance against enemies with assault infantry's uh, QCB dominance bonus. 5% uh, defense isn't bad. Dominance is 4 tiles and then goes up to 6 tiles. She effectively is harder to hit, harder to crit, and can eat more easily crit. And at the highest rank, that's plus 15%. That's not bad. That's actually not bad. That's almost low cover for just standing in the open. Okay, cool. Run and gun uh, has a five co uh, turns cooldown, so increased by two turns. And... Assault Infantry can equip a lighter weapon in both primary and secondary weapon slots. Balpap, uh, Combat Knife, each light weapon equipped reduces the gun and, run and gun cooldown by one turn. Okay. Activating run and gun automatically breaks concealment. Okay, I see. Well, that looks uh, fine. And we got a field medic. Cool. So, Taurus is our field medic. Uh, medical specialist. So his scaling ability is plus one free medkit charges. And level two plus one revive charges. At the beginning... Okay, I see. So at the beginning... Um, he just has straight up three charges on the med kit, okay. Then his med kits heal more, and later he even has more charges and even heals more, okay. Revive his med kit ability incapacitated soldiers, removing negative status effects and providing small amount of healing. Revive can be used on bleeding out soldiers without stabilizing first. Uh-huh, okay. Good, so they changed that. We got C8. When using an arc thrower to stun an ally, the stun effect will always be applied for the minimum duration and will not apply any additional negative effects. Any active mind control effects on the targets will be cleansed. Oh, I see. So he's using the arc uh, thrower and, and uh, can counteract uh, Psy abilities. Okay, cool. And then battlefield triage. Healing, stabilizing or reviving an ally will reduce the wound times for heavily injured uh, soldiers. Field medic is uh, conscious after mission. They can use any remaining medical supplies to provide stabilizing treatment. Beta filter triage will bring healed soldiers with the lowest hit points up to 45% of their total hit points. Uh, field medics remaining unused medic charges apply towards healing of soldiers that were wounded below the threshold. Each unused charge by the uh, field medic can be used to heal one member of the squad. Field medic cannot treat themselves. However, uh, if there is more than one field medic returning from a mission, they may treat each other. Okay, that's not bad. I like what I'm seeing. Before we do that, let's start with our uh, with our roster. 
So this looks a bit like, more like Long War due to the uh, mm, deeper, uh, more in-depth kind of look. So first and foremost, I think in Assault, I don't really have like uh, mm, proper color here, but I think we're, we can invent a color code uh, quite easily. So number one, Assaults are still red, like I am used to. Number two. I don't know where people are getting those damn advent burgers, but if I find another rabbit, the field medics could be green. What? Totally makes sense. Interesting color choice, by the way. And the helmet for Taurus looks um, different. Let's put it that way. Marksman. I like uh, them very similar to the snipers, so what we're going to do is color code them as if they were snipers. Cool. And we don't have we haven't seen the other three uh, uh, types of soldiers yet. So that's going to be interesting. Commander, to the research lab. Let's go to the research lab. We are starting, as always, well, modular weapons will just allow us to mod our weapons. Hybrid materials, on the other hand, will allow us to create vests, which we will need. And experimental weapons will allow us to get some uh, more cool materials. So let's start with... Let's start with hybrid materials. I can only remind you, we cannot upgrade our weapons and we are not allowed to upgrade our armor. So a lot of that research is already off the table. We are going to go with a guerrilla tactics school first. Pretty standard opener. And in terms of engineering, I mean, a med kit wouldn't hurt, right? We should recruit an engineer. Just give the word and I'll get started, Commander. You'd be surprised how big of a difference some of these things can make in combat, Commander. Yeah, let's go with one med kit. Guys, I can manufacture any this new Templar operative may be a bit unique, but so far everything seems on the level. It's all right. We're all good, uh, in Central. We don't know much don't about sweat your Templar, pants. So it might be worth sticking around here for a while, as well as contacting Geist, their leader. My people understand that I greet you as an ally facing the shield. Cool. So we have a couple of options here. We're starting with uh, supplies because I've spent all of the supplies. That makes sense. It's a good first starter. Basically gives us back some of uh, the stuff that we've already spent. At the same time, we're researching hybrid materials. Commander. The Avengers remote scanning capabilities will help us search the area for clues or other resources. Good. Nanoscale vests will be helpful. Um, modular weapons will allow us to basically mod our weapons. Alien biotech will allow us to take PCSs as and when we find them. And experimental weapons will only be helpful with proving ground. So we're going to go for PCSs next. Have a report assembled as soon as the engineer uh, that is very helpful arguably one of the strongest if not the strongest Command. first month the option to grow. We'll have a and we got another engineer wow okay cool as it is we've already identified a potential target to disrupt well hacking a workstation we do not have a hacker yet uh, keep in mind our field medic is fast. not a hacker Field Medic is just going to be the Medic. The question is, who are we going to take into the mission? I think I want at least three rookies so that uh, we can get the other three classes going. And the real question is, who's going to be our backbone? So we have a couple of others uh, that are drafted. Tarek Bubble Ray uh, is with us. Zoo Cougar makes a reappearance. Hayward is here. Edgar Alien Poe reporting for duty. Nemri Universe Lincoln is here. 
We got uh, Tuama's runner Martila, and I remember distinctly just creating this character. So good job, you made it uh, into the team. We got Tracy Saint Elliot, Alessandro Bastard Poeti, and Rookie Elizabeth Hall, which I think we can pretty much exchange for a different rookie. I'll get us. Um, a different rookie for that. It's not going to be game changing. It's basically just switching her for a viewer character. And uh, then we'll make a decision whom we're actually taking on the next mission. But that happens in episode two of Against the Hive. If you are excited for this run, then two things. Number one, tell someone about it. Uh, number two, you might want to get drafted yourself for future runs. I'll leave a comment down below and let me know how your character is supposed to look like. This is open recruitment season for the next uh, run. And number three, I would like to hear your prediction in the comments section down below as of uh, how this run is going to turn out. This is going to be a very bitter, uh, gruesome war and I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thanks for watching guys. If you are afraid of uh, the chrysalid hive, check the like button and uh, see if it has been infected by spores. Typically clicking multiple times onto it uh, will remove all of those and will prevent the tyranids from breaking out. Thanks for watching. Take care and see you in two days. Bye bye.